I'm Sandy Rinal with View County Health Department. I'm a PA who does reproductive health care for 35 years. Uh, I do this work because I'm one of 10 kids. And I was asked to talk today about sex education. And if I have anything to say, what I'd like to say is I'd like to build more of an alliance between um, parents and children. And I think um, the problem is a lot of people think that parents are the ones who should educate their children. Uh, but nobody really educated the parents. Um, the problems today are a little different than they have been throughout most of history because throughout most of history, the average age of puberty was about 14 and the average age of marriage was about 14. So being sexually active um, when it was your societal duty to be sexually active and your natural desire to be sexually active kind of coincided or were separated by a few months is a lot different from the state of the world today when uh, because of the good health of our children, they go through puberty earlier. Twelve is about average. Ten is not unusual. But we don't really want them as a culture to be reproductively active. Um, probably most people would say, you know, 26. So now instead of a gap of a few months, we have a gap of 16 years during which their desire to be sexually active is very strong. But the pr appropriate cultural structure for that kind of isn't there. Um, so how is the kid supposed to handle that um, where, when they're getting so many conflicting mes messages from the culture? Um, and they're not really getting good sex education. You know, 200 years ago, sex education wasn't all that necessary because 200 years ago, um, imagine the little one-room house on the prairie or the way people lived in more ancient times. You know, you have mom, dad, the seven kids, they're all going to bed in the one-room house on the prairie, and um, maybe the kid hears something over in the corner with the parents, um, and they know what that was, because when they went outside this morning, you know, the cows were doing it, the horses were doing it, the pigs, the chickens, um, they knew what that was. And nine months later, when mom goes into labor, well, they didn't haul her off to a hospital, and the kids didn't stand outside in the blizzard. You know, they saw what was going on. Um, just as they saw the cow giving birth, they saw mom uh, struggling with things, and you know, they, maybe they saw happy results, maybe they didn't. You know, maybe something went wrong and the baby died. Uh, maybe mom yeah. died. It's a different world today because today we have um, the grocery store, so we don't have the cows and the pigs and the chickens. Um, we have the three-bedroom home. We have the automobiles, so we don't have the horses, and even the animals that we do live with. Uh, the dogs and the cats, most of them have been surgically altered uh, so that they don't do those embarrassing behaviors in front of everybody. So the kids have no legitimate way to learn about something that's going to be a very important part of their life.